Hi friends, welcome back to Edipedia World. In my last lecture, we saw the conservation of energy and specifically the conservation of mechanical energy in details. Today's lecture will be focused on a simple example of conservation of energy using a simple pendulum. And then we will see about energy degradation, which is the case when the total energy or the total mechanical energy is not conserved because there are losses of energy into unwanted forms of energy. So let us get started with today's lecture and see in details about simple pendulum and the energy degradation. Let us see the conservation of mechanical energy using the example of a simple pendulum. To start with, let us understand what a simple pendulum is. A simple pendulum is basically a bob hanging via a thread and the thread is supposed to be a massless thread and a mass M is at the other end. This is called the bob. This is the thread. The thread is supposed to be massless and the whole mass is concentrated at the bob. So how does a simple pendulum work? What we do is that we basically displace the bob in such a way that it is over here. We bring the mass over here and then we release it. When we release it, then the bob will follow this trajectory and it will pass through the center and then it will rise up, it will reach an extreme point over here and then it will come back again, pass through the center and reach here and this oscillation about this mean position will keep on repeating itself. If there is no friction present, then this oscillation will keep on going for infinitely long time. Now for calculation purposes, we assume that the potential energy at the lowest point is zero. We assume this as the reference point. So the potential energy over here is assumed to be zero and we see this is the reference line and this is the line for the highest point. The height will be same over here, the extreme points. And this height, let us say it as h. Now if this height is h, then the potential energy at the extreme points over here and here will be potential energy will be m g times h m g times h that is the potential energy at the extreme position the potential energy at the mean position is zero we also know that the bob is released at this point at the extreme position so the velocity at the extreme position is zero the u at this position is zero and since this is another extreme the bob stops momentarily here and then it starts to move back towards the mean position so the velocity over here will also be equal to zero since the velocity is zero at the extreme positions the kinetic energy for the extreme position is zero since there is no motion. Now we know that the kinetic energy is zero here, the potential energy is mgh. So for both the extreme position, the total energy, the total mechanical energy is mgh. Now we know that the total mechanical energy is mgh at the extreme position. By applying the law of conservation of energy, we can say that the total energy at the extreme position and the total energy at the mean position has to be equal. 
therefore the kinetic energy here the kinetic energy here will have to be equal to mgh since the potential energy is zero kinetic energy plus potential energy has to be mgh therefore the kinetic energy turns out to be mgh this is where we applied the conservation of mechanical energy or the conservation of total energy the only assumption here is that there is no air resistance if there were air resistance then the ball would continuously reduce its amplitude that is it will not reach the maximum height but after each oscillation the maximum height reached will be reduced and after some time the bob will become stationary at its mean position so this whole calculation is done based on the fact that there is no air resistance so this is a, actually an idealized scenario but under this idealized scenario we found out that the kinetic energy at the lowest point at the mean position is mgh so what we see is that initially the bob has a potential energy due to the height and it had zero kinetic energy but as we leave the bob it starts gaining kinetic energy as it loses potential energy gaining 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 and then at the mean position it has the maximum kinetic energy zero potential energy beyond this the kinetic energy starts turning into potential energy again until it reaches the extreme point when the whole mechanical energy is in the form of potential energy and there is zero kinetic energy this is the example of simple pendulum where we have applied the law of conservation of energy or law of conservation of mechanical energy now we can also find the two maximum velocity where will the maximum velocity be the maximum velocity will be at the position at the mean position why because that is the position where the kinetic energy is maximum let us find the maximum velocity we will use this kinetic energy mgh and how much will that be mgh is equal to half m v square and this v is the maximum so let me write it as v m square this gives me v m is equal to root under 2 g h so higher the bob is moved initially more will be the maximum velocity of the bob at the mean position i hope this example helps us to understand better how the total mechanical energy is conserved in a given scenario next let us see what is called as energy degradation as the name suggests energy degradation refers to the conversion of energy into a different form of energy which is not useful or a form of energy which was not intended for the energy purpose like uh, if we are using a light bulb we are we want to convert the electrical energy into light energy but that never happens as in the hundred percent electrical energy does not convert itself into light energy in fact most of the electrical energy is lost in form of heat through radiations and uh, in heating the filament so most of the energy is lost and only a fraction of the energy is actually used to produce light so this is an example where energy degradation is taking place let me write the definition of energy degradation energy degradation is decrease in
decrease in useful energy due to loss as friction radiation sound losses heat losses or other different forms of energy losses so the intended usage of the energy is not completely feasible some of it is lost and that phenomena of loss is called as energy degradation Another example would be, suppose this pendulum. We saw the example of pendulum and we assumed that there is no losses and then we made the whole calculation. But in real scenario, there will be air present around the pendulum and that air will provide a resistance and the resistance will lead to slowing down of the bob after each oscillation so what is happening here is that energy is degrading energy is being converted into useless forms of energy not the energy that it was intended to this will be lost as frictional energy against the air resistance so i think with this we understand a little bit about energy degradation and we also understand that energy degradation is something that we do not want to have because this leads to a loss of energy which is not recover recoverable. Another example let us see for energy degradation. Suppose you have a ball and you drop it from the maximum a height h then the ball strikes here the surface and what you will observe in practicality is that the ball will rebound but it will not reach the height h again it will be somewhere below h let's say h dash and then it goes back it rebounds now it reaches somewhere here which is h double dash and with each rebound the maximum height reached keeps on reducing. Where does the loss of energy go? The loss of energy goes as heat loss at the point of contact. The ground is absorbing some energy as heat. There is sound produced after each impact. So there is loss as sound. And there is increase in vibrations of uh, the ear and there is air resistance so those are other losses which leads to reduction in height after each bouncing of the ball so this is a classic example where energy degradation is taking place i think with these examples we have a sufficiently clear picture about what energy degradation is and with this i will close today's lecture in the next lecture we will see examples of conservation of energy, conservation of mechanical energy, how can we correlate potential energy and kinetic energy and using the conservation of energy, how can we rapidly calculate the velocity or the potential energy or the kinetic energy of a body under different scenarios. So till the next lecture, have a great day, goodbye.